President Biden is warning that COVID cases will go up before they come down. The comment comes as the U.S. marks an important milestone. 50 percent of Americans are now fully vaccinated against COVID. That's according to the White House. At the same time, we're grappling with the reality that increasingly people may get infected or even reinfected even though they've been vaccinated. To get a better understanding of what's going on here, I spoke with Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergies and Infectious Diseases. I started by asking him what he's most concerned about, the Delta variant or the other variants coming next. I'm concerned about the Delta variant because, as you well know, this is now the dominant variant. 93 percent of the isolates in the United States are Delta. We have 93 million people who are eligible to be vaccinated, who have not gotten vaccinated yet. We hope, we really do hope that we will get the majority, if not the majority, the overwhelming majority of those people vaccinated. If you look at the numbers and the slope of the inflection curve of new cases per day, it clearly has taken a very bad turn. Remember a couple of months ago, when we came down from that high slope we were on, we were down to around 10 to 15,000 infections per day on a seven day average. We are now up to 70,000 plus. And yeah. yesterday and the day before, we had over 100,000 infections. Interestingly, these are very much concentrated in certain areas with low vaccination rate. And interestingly, also, Two states, Texas and Florida, are accounting for a very disproportionately high proportion, something like 40 percent of the infections. Florida is leading the charge on that with about 20 plus percent of the infections occurring in right. just one out of the 50 states. So this is a, an outbreak, an unfortunate outbreak, predominantly, heavily predominantly, among the unvaccinated. So the delta that we're dealing with now troubles me for the reasons I just mentioned. Well, the second part of your question is also important. Mm. As long as you have virus freely circulating in society the way it's doing now with 100,000 cases a day, you give ample opportunity to the virus to continue to mutate and it is conceivable, I hope not, but it is conceivable that that could mutate into a variant that's even more problematic than the Delta variant. So I'm concerned on two fronts, on what's going on now and what could conceivably happen if we don't get control of this virus. One thing that I want to talk about is vaccine hesitancy, and one of the contributing factors to that is the lack of FDA approval. Is there anything that could be done to speed that up? That's a great, and uh, it, it wins the prize for the most asked question. <laughs> uh, so here's the situation we're faced with. The FDA is an independent agency. In order to maintain the credibility when they say something, that it is now safe and effective, finally in the final approval, as opposed to an EUA, that you want to make sure you don't do anything that in fact or in appearance looks like you're influencing that decision. Right. And that's the reason why you never hear public health officials, including myself, trying to get ahead of the FDA. The only thing we can say is, A, we don't know when that's going to happen. B, they have said they have all hands on deck to get this done as quickly as possible. And then I can give you my personal hope, not my prediction, right. but my hope that this happens in the next few weeks before we come to the end of August. Because you're absolutely correct. Even though the data that we have within the context of the EUA is overwhelmingly confirmatory that, this, that these vaccines, plural, that these vaccines are highly effective and quite safe. Nonetheless, the terminology of emergency use authorization has some people maintain their hesitancy. And when you hear that it is now 
finally approved, which inevitably it's going to be finally right. approved, then people might feel more confident in getting it. And even more importantly, enterprises and organizations will feel much more comfortable and empowered to locally mandate vaccines. Would you advise corporate businesses to institute a vaccine mandate? And if they don't, should they at minimum have a mask mandate in the counties with high transmission? Well, there's no secret that I feel that we should not have central mandates from the federal government. But given the fact that we are in somewhat of a very difficult situation with the accelerating cases, I would encourage private enterprises to seriously consider the idea of mandating vaccination in the enterprise for which they are responsible, whether that's a university or a place of business. I am one to say you've reached a point now that this is a public health issue of a great deal of seriousness. So we need to do whatever we can. I know people don't like mandates for them to do things that they feel encroach upon their individual liberty. But in fact, when you are in a public health crisis, sometimes you've got to look out for the good of the community as well as your own personal libertarian views. Thanks for watching Bloomberg Quick Take Now. Subscribe to our channel to see the biggest stories the moment they happen from around the world. And tune into our 24 7 live stream for global news coverage, interviews, deep dives, shows, and documentaries on the stories you care about most.